What is the Superfund Act? In 1980 the United States Congress passed the Comprehensive Environmental Response, Compensation, and Liability Act, commonly known as the Superfund Program. This law, along with amendments in 1986 and 1990, established a dollar 16.3 dash billion. Superfund financed jointly by federal and state governments and by special taxes on chemical and petrochemical industries, which provide 86% of the funding. The purpose of the Superfund is to identify and clean up abandoned hazardous waste. Dump sites and leaking underground tanks that threaten human health and the environment. To keep taxpayers from footing most of the bill, cleanups are based on the polluter pays principle. The EPA is charged with locating dangerous dump sites, finding the potentially liable culprits, ordering them to pay for the entire cleanup, and suing them if they don't. When the EPA can find no responsible party, it draws money out of the Superfund for cleanup. What is the Superfund Act? In 1980 the United States Congress passed the Comprehensive Environmental Response, Compensation, and Liability Act, commonly known as the Superfund Program. This law along with amendments in 1986 and 1990, established a dollar 16.3 dash billion. Superfund financed jointly by federal and state governments and by special taxes on chemical and petrochemical industries, which provide 86% of the funding. The purpose of the Superfund is to identify and clean up abandoned hazardous waste. Dump sites and leaking underground tanks that threaten human health and the environment. To keep taxpayers from footing most of the bill, cleanups are based on the polluter pays principle. The EPA is charged with locating dangerous dump sites, finding the potentially liable culprits ordering them to pay for the entire cleanup, and suing them if they don't. When the EPA can find no responsible party, it draws money out of the Superfund for cleanup. What is the NIMBY syndrome? NIMBY is the acronym for Not In My Backyard. It refers to major community resistance. To construction of new incinerators, landfills, prisons, roads, and so forth. NIMBY is not in my front yard. What is the NIMBY syndrome? NIMBY is the acronym for Not In My Backyard. It refers to major community resistance. To construction of new incinerators, landfills, prisons, roads, and so forth. NIMBY is not in my front yard. How is nuclear waste stored and regulated?
Nuclear wastes consist either of fission products formed from atom splitting of uranium, cesium, strontium, or krypton, or from transuranic elements formed when uranium atoms absorb free neutrons. Wastes from transuranic elements are less radioactive than fission products. However, these elements remain radioactive far longer than fission products. Transuranic wastes include irradiated fuel, spent fuel, in the form of 12 feet 4 meters long rods. High level radioactive waste in the form of liquid or sludge, and low level waste. Non-transuranic or legally high level, in the form of reactor hardware, piping, toxic resins. Water from fuel pools, and other items that have become contaminated with radioactivity. Currently, most spent nuclear fuel in the United States is safely stored. In specially designed pools at individual reactor sites around the country. If pool capacity is reached, licensees may move toward use of above-ground dry storage casks. The three low-level radioactive waste disposal sites are Barnwell, South Carolina, Hanford, Washington, and EnviroCare, Utah. Each site accepts low-level radioactive waste from specific regions of the country. But only EnviroCare uses above-ground storage. Most high-level nuclear waste has been stored in double-walled stainless steel tanks surrounded by 3 feet 1 meter of concrete. The current best storage method, developed by the French in 1978, is to incorporate the waste into a special molten glass mixture. Then enclose it in a steel container and bury it in a special pit. The Nuclear Waste Policy Act of 1982, as amended in 1987, specified that high-level radioactive waste would be disposed of underground in a deep geologic repository. Yucca Mountain, Nevada was chosen as the single site to be developed for disposal of high-level radioactive waste. On July 23, 2002, President George W. Bush signed House Joint Resolution 87, allowing the Department of Energy to establish a repository in Yucca Mountain to safely store nuclear waste. However, some scientists still expressed concerns about the estimates of how long it would take for rainwater and snow to infiltrate the mountain and corrode the containers. How is nuclear waste stored and regulated? Nuclear wastes consist either of fission products formed from atom splitting of uranium, cesium, strontium, or krypton, or from transuranic elements formed when uranium atoms absorb free neutrons. Wastes from transuranic elements are less radioactive than fission products. However, these elements remain radioactive far longer than fission products. Transuranic wastes include irradiated fuel, spent fuel, in the form of 12 feet 4 meters long rods. High-level radioactive waste in the form of liquid or sludge, and low-level waste. Non-transuranic or legally high-level, in the form of reactor hardware, piping, toxic resins. Water from fuel pools, and other items that have become contaminated with radioactivity. 
Currently, most spent nuclear fuel in the United States is safely stored. In specially designed pools at individual reactor sites around the country. If pool capacity is reached, licensees may move toward use of above-ground dry storage casks. The three low-level radioactive waste disposal sites are Barnwell, South Carolina, Hanford, Washington, and EnviroCare, Utah. Each site accepts low-level radioactive waste from specific regions of the country. But only EnviroCare uses above-ground storage. Most high-level nuclear waste has been stored in double-walled. Stainless steel tanks surrounded by 3 feet 1 meter of concrete. The current best storage method, developed by the French in 1978, is to incorporate the waste into a special molten glass mixture. Then enclose it in a steel container and bury it in a special pit. The Nuclear Waste Policy Act of 1982, as amended in 1987, specified that high-level radioactive waste would be disposed of underground in a deep geologic repository. Yucca Mountain, Nevada was chosen as the single site to be developed for disposal of high-level radioactive waste. On July 23, 2002, President George W. Bush signed House Joint Resolution 87, allowing the Department of Energy to establish a repository in Yucca Mountain to safely store nuclear waste. However, some scientists still expressed concerns about the estimates of how long it would take for rainwater and snow to infiltrate the mountain and corrode the containers. How much garbage does the average American generate? According to the Environmental Protection Agency, Nearly 232 million tons of municipal waste was generated in 2000. This is equivalent to 4.6 pounds 2.1 kilograms per person per day, or approximately 1,700 pounds 770 kilograms per person per year. How much garbage does the average American generate? According to the Environmental Protection Agency, nearly 232 million tons of municipal waste was generated in 2000. This is equivalent to 4.6 pounds 2.1 kilograms per person per day, or approximately 1,700 pounds 770 kilograms per person per year. The total amount of waste is distributed as follows. How critical is the problem of landfills in the United States? Landfilling has been an essential component of waste management for several decades. In 1960, 62% of all garbage was sent to landfills, and by 1980 the figure had risen to 81%. By 1990, 84% of the 269 million tons of municipal 
solid waste that was generated was sent to landfills. An increased awareness of the benefits of recycling has brought a decline in the actual number of landfills from 4,482 in 1995 to 2. 142 in 2000 as well as a decrease in the amount of municipal solid waste that is sent to landfills. Figures for 2000 indicate that only 60% of the municipal solid waste generated was sent to landfills. The total amount of recycled waste increased from 8% to 33% between 1990 and 2000. The total amount of waste is distributed as follows. How critical is the problem of landfills in the United States? Landfilling has been an essential component of waste management for several decades. In 1960, 62% of all garbage was sent to landfills, and by 1980 the figure had risen to 81%. By 1990, 84% of the 269 million tons of municipal Solid waste that was generated was sent to landfills. An increased awareness of the benefits of recycling has brought a decline in the actual number of landfills from 4,482 in 1995 to 2. 142 in 2000 as well as a decrease in the amount of municipal solid waste that is sent to landfills. Figures for 2000 indicate that only 60% of the municipal solid waste generated was sent to landfills. The total amount of recycled waste increased from 8% to 33% between 1990 and 2000. How much newspaper must be recycled to save one tree? One thirty-five to forty feet, ten point six to twelve m tree produces a stack of newspapers four feet, one point two m thick. This much newspaper must be recycled to save a tree. How much newspaper must be recycled to save one tree? 135 to 40 feet, 10.6 to 12 m, tree produces a stack of newspapers 4 feet. 1.2 m, thick, this much newspaper must be recycled to save a tree. How can plastics be made biodegradable? Plastic neither rusts nor rots. This is an advantage in its usage, but when it comes to disposal of plastic, the advantage turns into a liability. Degradable plastic has starch in it so that it can be attacked by starch-eating bacteria to eventually disintegrate the plastic into bits. Chemically degradable plastic can be broken up with a chemical solution that dissolves it. Used in surgery, biodegradable plastic stitches slowly dissolve in the body fluids. 
Photodegradable plastic contains chemicals that disintegrate. Over a period of 1 to 3 years when exposed to light. 25% of the plastic yolks used to package beverages are made from a plastic called e collet which is photodegradable. How can plastics be made biodegradable? Plastic neither rusts nor rots. This is an advantage in its usage, but when it comes to disposal of plastic, the advantage turns into a liability. Degradable plastic has starch in it so that it can be attacked by starch eating bacteria to eventually disintegrate the plastic into bits. Chemically degradable plastic can be broken up with a chemical solution that dissolves it. Used in surgery, biodegradable plastic stitches slowly dissolve in the body fluids. Photodegradable plastic contains chemicals that disintegrate. Over a period of 1 to 3 years when exposed to light. 25% of the plastic yolks used to package beverages are made from a plastic called e collet which is photodegradable. What do the numbers inside the recycling symbol on plastic containers mean? The Society of the Plastics Industry developed a voluntary coding system for plastic containers to assist recyclers in sorting plastic containers. The symbol is designed to be imprinted on the bottom of the plastic containers. The numerical code appears inside a three-sided triangular arrow. A guide to what the numbers mean is listed below. The most commonly recycled plastics are polyethylene terephthalate, PET, and high-density polyethylene, HDPE. What do the numbers inside the recycling symbol on plastic containers mean? The Society of the Plastics Industry developed a voluntary coding system for plastic containers to assist recyclers in sorting plastic containers. The symbol is designed to be imprinted on the bottom of the plastic containers. The numerical code appears inside a three-sided triangular arrow. A guide to what the numbers mean is listed below. The most commonly recycled plastics are polyethylene terephthalate, PET, and high-density polyethylene, HDPE. What products are made from recycling plastic? A new clothing fiber called Fortral EcoSpun is made from recycled plastic soda bottles. The fiber is knit or woven into garments such as fleece for outerwear or long underwear. The processor estimates that every pound of Fortral EcoSpun fiber results in 10 plastic bottles being kept out of landfills.
What products are made from recycling plastic? A new clothing fiber called Fortral Eco Spun is made from recycled plastic soda bottles. The fiber is knit or woven into garments such as fleece for outerwear or long underwear. The processor estimates that every pound of Fortral Eco Spun fiber results in 10 plastic bottles being kept out of landfills. When offered a choice between plastic or paper bags for your groceries, which should you choose? The answer is neither. Both are environmentally harmful, and the question of which is the more damaging has no clear-cut answer. On one hand, Plastic bags degrade slowly in landfills and can harm wildlife if swallowed. And producing them pollutes the environment. On the other hand, producing the brown paper bags used in. Most supermarkets uses trees and pollutes the air and water. Overall, White or clear polyethylene bags require less energy for manufacture and cause less damage to the environment than do paper bags not made from recycled paper. Instead of having to choose between paper and plastic bags, you can bring your own reusable canvas or string containers to the store. And you can save and reuse any paper or plastic bags you get. When offered a choice between plastic or paper bags for your groceries, which should you choose? The answer is neither. Both are environmentally harmful, and the question of which is the more damaging has no clear-cut answer. On one hand, Plastic bags degrade slowly in landfills and can harm wildlife if swallowed. And producing them pollutes the environment. On the other hand, producing the brown paper bags used in. Most supermarkets uses trees and pollutes the air and water. Overall, White or clear polyethylene bags require less energy for manufacture and cause less damage to the environment than do paper bags not made from recycled paper. Instead of having to choose between paper and plastic bags, you can bring your own reusable canvas or string containers to the store. And you can save and reuse any paper or plastic bags you get. How is Henry David Thoreau associated with the environment? Henry David Thoreau, 1817-1862, was a writer and naturalist from New England. His most familiar work, Walden, describes the time he spent in a cabin near Walden Pond in Massachusetts. He is also known for being one of the first to write and lecture on the topic of forest succession. His work, along with that of John Muir, 1838-1914, and others, has served to inspire those others to understand the natural world and provide for its conservation.
Biome Summary What is a Klein? A Klein refers to geographic variation due to a gradient of climatic features. For example, a north-south gradient may include a range of temperature and a range of plant sizes. With taller plants at the southern end and shorter plants at the northern end. How is nuclear waste stored and regulated? Nuclear wastes consist either of fission products formed from atom splitting of uranium, cesium, strontium, or krypton, or from transuranic elements formed when uranium atoms absorb free neutrons. Wastes from transuranic elements are less radioactive than fission products. However, these elements remain radioactive far longer than fission products. Transuranic wastes include irradiated fuel, spent fuel, in the form of 12 feet 4 meters long rods. High level radioactive waste in the form of liquid or sludge, and low level waste. Non-transuranic or legally high level, in the form of reactor hardware, piping, toxic resins. Water from fuel pools, and other items that have become contaminated with radioactivity. Currently, most spent nuclear fuel in the United States is safely stored. In specially designed pools at individual reactor sites around the country. If pool capacity is reached, licensees may move toward use of above-ground dry storage casks. The three low-level radioactive waste disposal sites are Barnwell, South Carolina, Hanford, Washington, and EnviroCare, Utah. Each site accepts low-level radioactive waste from specific regions of the country. But only EnviroCare uses above ground storage. Most high level nuclear waste has been stored in double walled stainless steel tanks surrounded by 3 feet 1 meter of concrete. The current best storage method, developed by the French in 1978, is to incorporate the waste into a special molten glass mixture. Then enclose it in a steel container and bury it in a special pit. The Nuclear Waste Policy Act of 1982, as amended in 1987, specified that high level radioactive waste would be disposed of underground in a deep geologic repository. Yucca Mountain, Nevada was chosen as the single site to be developed for disposal of high-level radioactive waste. On July 23, 2002, President George W. Bush signed House Joint Resolution 87, allowing the Department of Energy to establish a repository in Yucca Mountain to safely store nuclear waste. However, some scientists still expressed concerns about the estimates of how long it would take for rainwater and snow to infiltrate the mountain and corrode the containers. When offered a choice between plastic or paper bags for your groceries, which should you choose? The answer is neither. Both are environmentally harmful, 
and the question of which is the more damaging has no clear-cut answer. On one hand, plastic bags degrade slowly in landfills and can harm wildlife if swallowed. And producing them pollutes the environment. On the other hand, producing the brown paper bags used in most supermarkets uses trees and pollutes the air and water. Overall, white or clear polyethylene bags require less energy for manufacture and cause less damage to the environment than do paper bags not made from recycled paper. Instead of having to choose between paper and plastic bags, you can bring your own reusable canvas or string containers to the store. And you can save and reuse any paper or plastic bags you get. What is the toxic release inventory? Toxic release inventory, TRI, is a government mandated publicly available compilation of information on the release of over 650 individual toxic chemicals and toxic chemical categories by manufacturing facilities in the United States. The law requires manufacturers to state the amounts of chemicals they release directly to air land or water or state that they transfer to off-site facilities that treat or dispose of wastes the US Environmental Protection Agency compiles these reports into an annual inventory and makes the information available in a computerized database in 2000, 23,484 facilities released 7.1 billion pounds. 3.2 billion kilograms of toxic chemicals into the environment. Over 260 million pounds, 118 million kilograms of this total were released into surface water, 1.9 billion pounds. 86 million kilograms were emitted into the air over 4.13 billion pounds 1.87 billion kilograms were released to land and over 278 million pounds 126 million kilograms were injected into underground wells the total amount of toxic chemicals released in 2000 was 6.7% lower than the amount released in 1999. The total amount of waste is distributed as follows. How critical is the problem of landfills in the United States? Landfilling has been an essential component of waste management for several decades. In 1960, 62% of all garbage was sent to landfills, and by 1980 the figure had risen to 81%. By 1990, 84% of the 269 million tons of municipal Solid waste that was generated was sent to landfills. An increased awareness of the benefits of recycling has brought a decline in the actual number of landfills from 4,482 in 1995 to 2. 142 in 2000 as well as a decrease in the amount of municipal solid waste that is sent to landfills. Figures for 2000 indicate that only 60% of the 
municipal solid waste generated was sent to landfills. The total amount of recycled waste increased from 8% to 33% between 1990 and 2000. Who started Earth Day? The first Earth Day, April 22, 1970, was coordinated by Dennis Hayes at the request of Gaylord Nelson, 1916, U. As Senator from Wisconsin. Nelson is sometimes called the father of Earth Day. His main objective was to organize a nationwide public demonstration so large it would get the attention of politicians and force the environmental issue into the political dialogue of the nation. Important official actions that began soon after the celebration of the first Earth Day were the Establishment of the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, the creation of the President's Council on Environmental Quality, and the passage of the Clean Air Act, establishing national air quality standards. In 1995 Gaylord Nelson received the Presidential Medal of Freedom for his contributions to the environmental protection movement. Earth Day continues to be celebrated each spring. How much garbage does the average American generate? According to the Environmental Protection Agency, Nearly 232 million tons of municipal waste was generated in 2000. This is equivalent to 4.6 pounds 2.1 kilograms per person per day, or approximately 1,700 pounds 770 kilograms per person per year. What is a limiting factor in an ecosystem? A limiting factor is any environmental factor that restricts the ecological niche of an organism. Limiting factors are based on the law of supply and demand. Those factors, resources whose supply is less than demand can influence the distribution of species within a community. Examples of limiting factors include soil, minerals, temperature extremes, and water availability. Was the Exxon Valdez spill the largest oil spill of the 20th century? Although the Exxon Valdez was widely publicized as a major spill of 255,500 barrels, 35,000 tons, in 1989, it was not the largest of the century. The first major commercial oil spill occurred on March 18, 1967, when the tanker Torrey Canyon grounded on the Seven Stones Shoal off the coast of Cornwall, England, spilling 830,000 barrels, 119,000 tons, of Kuwaiti oil into the sea. This was the first major tanker accident. However, 
during World War II German U-boat attacks on tankers between January and June 1942 spilled 4.3 million barrels. 590,000 tons, of oil off the east coast of the United States. Even this spill is dwarfed by the deliberate dumping of oil from Sea Island into the Persian Gulf during the First Gulf War in 1991. It is estimated that the Sea Island spill equaled almost 10.9 million barrels, 1.5 million tons, of oil. A major spill also occurred in Russia in October 1994 in the Komi region of the Arctic. The size of the spill was reported to be as much as 2 million barrels, 286,000 tons. In addition to the large disasters, day-to-day -day pollution occurs from drilling. Platforms where waste generated from platform life, including human waste. And oils, chemicals, mud, and rock from drilling are discharged into the water. What is the carbon cycle? To survive, every organism must have access to carbon atoms. Carbon makes up about 49% of the dry weight of organisms. The carbon cycle includes movement of carbon from the gaseous phase. Carbon dioxide CO2 in the atmosphere, to solid phase. Carbon containing compounds in living organisms, and then back to the atmosphere via decomposers. The atmosphere is the largest reservoir of carbon, containing 32% CO2. Biological Processes on land shuttle carbon between atmospheric and terrestrial compartments. With photosynthesis removing CO2 from the atmosphere and cell respiration returning CO2 to the atmosphere. Where does rain come from? Solar energy drives winds that evaporate water from the surface of the oceans. The water vapor cools as it rises and then falls to the ground as rain. Snow, or some other form of precipitation. Rain is part of the hydrologic cycle, which describes dynamic changes in the aquatic environment. What is biogeography? Biogeography is the study of the distribution, both current and past, of individual species in specific environments. One of the first biogeographers was Carolus Linnaeus, 1707-1778. A Swedish botanist who studied the distribution of plants. Biogeography specifically addresses the questions of evolution, extinction, and dispersal of organisms in specific ecosystems. What is the hydrologic cycle? The hydrologic cycle takes place in the hydrosphere, which is the region containing all the water in the atmosphere and the Earth's surface. 
It involves five phases, condensation, infiltration, runoff, evaporation, and precipitation. How can plastics be made biodegradable? Plastic neither rusts nor rots. This is an advantage in its usage, but when it comes to disposal of plastic, the advantage turns into a liability. Degradable plastic has starch in it so that it can be attacked by starch-eating bacteria to eventually disintegrate the plastic into bits. Chemically degradable plastic can be broken up with a chemical solution that dissolves it. Used in surgery, biodegradable plastic stitches slowly dissolve in the body fluids. Photodegradable plastic contains chemicals that disintegrate. Over a period of 1 to 3 years when exposed to light. 25% of the plastic yolks used to package beverages are made from a plastic called E. coli, which is photodegradable. What are the general characteristics of biomes? A biome is a one of the world's prominent ecosystems. Characterized by both vegetation and organisms particularly adapted to that environment. How many acres of wetlands have been lost in the United States? Since access to water is important to industrial development, many cities are located in areas including wetlands. In the urbanization process, wetlands have been drained, filled, or used as dumps. Each wetland area serves as a habitat to many different plants and animals. With special regard to spawning and nursery habitats. The Wetlands Restoration Act, H.R. 1474, enacted November 29, 1990, refers to wetland MIT Igashin Banking and provides that any person who discharges dredged or fill material into the waters of the United States must have a permit from the Army Corps of Engineers. This act is an attempt to preserve the complex communities that are found within wetlands. Wetlands are the lands between aquatic and terrestrial areas. Such as bogs, marshes, swamps, and coastal waters. Although wetlands were at one time considered wastelands, scientists now recognize the importance of wetlands to improve water quality, stabilize water levels, prevent flooding, regulate erosion, and sustain a variety of organisms. The United States has lost approximately 100 million acres of wetland areas between colonial times and the 1970s. The 1993 Wetlands Plan established a goal of reversing the trend of 100,000 acres of wetland loss to 100,000 acres of wetland recovery. What is a microclimate? 
when you notice that the temperature forecast in your local media is consistently warmer or colder than that which occurs in your neighborhood, you have identified a microclimate. Light, temperature, and moisture may all vary from one area to another. Within a biome because of changes in altitude, vegetation, or other factors. In addition, rainforests when was the symbol of Smokey Bear first used to encourage forest fire prevention? The origin of Smokey Bear can be traced to World War II, when the U.S. Forest Service, concerned about maintaining a steady lumber supply for the war effort, wished to educate the public about the dangers of forest fires. They sought volunteer advertising support from the War Advertising Council. And on August 9, 1944, Albert Steele, a noted illustrator of animals, created Smokey Bear. Since 1944 Smokey Bear has been a national symbol of forest fire prevention not only in America, but also in Canada and Mexico, where he is known as Simon in both countries. This public service advertising, PSA, campaign is the longest running PSA campaign in U.S. history. In 1947 a Los Angeles advertising agency coined the slogan Only You Can Prevent Forest Fires. On April 23, 2001, after more than 50 years, the famous ad slogan was revised to Only You Can Prevent Wildfires. In response to the wildfire outbreaks during 2000, the campaign gained a living mascot in 1950 when a firefighting crew rescued a male bear cub from a forest fire in the capital mountains of New Mexico. Sent to the National Zoo in Washington, D.C., to become Smokey Bear. The animal was a living symbol of forest fire protection until his death in 1976. His remains are buried at the Smokey Bear State Historical Park in Capitan. New Mexico. How do plants obtain nitrogen? The primary way that plants obtain nitrogen compounds is via the nitrogen cycle which is a series of reactions involving several different types of bacteria including nitrogen fixing bacteria and denitrifying bacteria during nitrogen fixation symbiotic bacteria which live in association with the roots of legumes are able through a series of enzymatic reactions to make nitrogen available for plants Nitrogen is crucial to all organisms because it is an integral element of proteins and nucleic acids. Although Earth's atmosphere is 79% nitrogen, molecular nitrogen is very stable and does not easily combine with other elements. Plants must use nitrogen in its fixed form, such as ammonia, urea, or the nitrate ion. What are Operation Ranch Hand and Agent Orange? Operation Ranch Hand was the tactical military project for the Aerial Spring. 
of herbicides in South Vietnam during the Vietnam conflict, 1961-1975. In these operations, Agent Orange the collective name for the herbicides 2,4-D and 2,4,5-T, was used for the defoliation. The name derives from the color-coded drums in which the herbicides were stored. In all, U.S. troops sprayed approximately 19 million gallons, 72 million liters, of herbicides over 4 million acres, 1.6 million hectare. Concerns about the health effects of Agent Orange were initially voiced in 1970. And since then the issue has been complicated by scientific and political debate. In 1993 a 16-member panel of experts reviewed the existing scientific evidence and found strong evidence of a statistical association between herbicides and soft tissue sarcoma. Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, Hodgkin's disease, and chloracne. On the other hand, the panel concluded that no connection appeared to exist between exposure to Agent Orange and skin cancer, bladder cancer, brain tumors, or stomach cancer. What is the Superfund Act? In 1980 the United States Congress passed the Comprehensive Environmental Response, Compensation, and Liability Act, commonly known as the Superfund Program. This law along with amendments in 1986 and 1990, established a $16.3 billion Superfund financed jointly by federal and state governments and by special taxes on chemical and petrochemical industries, which provide 86% of the funding. The purpose of the Superfund is to identify and clean up abandoned hazardous waste. Dump sites and leaking underground tanks that threaten human health and the environment. To keep taxpayers from footing most of the bill, cleanups are based on the polluter pays principle. The EPA is charged with locating dangerous dump sites, finding the potentially liable culprits ordering them to pay for the entire cleanup, and suing them if they don't. When the EPA can find no responsible party, it draws money out of the Superfund for cleanup. What is the importance of the rainforest? Half of all medicines prescribed worldwide are originally derived from wild products. And the United States National Cancer Institute has identified more than two. 000 tropical rainforest plants with the potential to fight cancer. Rubber, timber, gums, resins, and waxes, pesticides, lubricants, nuts and fruits. Flavorings and dyes tufts, steroids, latexes, essential and edible oils. And bamboo are among the products that would be drastically affected by the depletion of the tropical forests. What is the pollutant standard index?
the U. S. Environmental Protection Agency and the South Coast Air Quality Management District of El Monte. California, devised the Pollutant Standard Index to monitor concentrations of pollutants in the air and inform the public concerning related health effects. The scale, which measures the amount of pollution in parts per million has been in use nationwide since 1978. What products are made from recycling plastic? A new clothing fiber called Fortral EcoSpun is made from recycled plastic soda bottles. The fiber is knit or woven into garments such as fleece for outerwear or long underwear. The processor estimates that every pound of Fortral EcoSpun fiber results in 10 plastic bottles being kept out of landfills. Who is considered the founder of modern conservation? American naturalist John Muir, 1838-1914, is the father of conservation and the founder of the Sierra Club. He fought for the preservation of the Sierra Nevada in California and the creation of Yosemite National Park. He directed most of the Sierra Club's conservation efforts and was a lobbyist for the Antiquities Act, which prohibited the removal or destruction of structures of historic significance from federal lands. Another prominent influence was George Perkins Marsh, 1801-1882, a Vermont lawyer and scholar. His book Man and Nature emphasized the mistakes of past civilizations that resulted in destruction of natural resources. As the conservation movement swept through the country in the last three decades of the 19th century, a number of prominent citizens joined. The efforts to conserve natural resources and to preserve wilderness areas Writer John Burroughs, 1837-1921, Forrester Gifford Pinchot, 1865-1946, Botanist Charles Sprague Sargent, 1841-1927, and Editor Robert Underwood Johnson, 1857-1937, were early advocates of conservation. What do the numbers inside the recycling symbol on plastic containers mean? The Society of the Plastics Industry developed a voluntary coding system for plastic containers to assist recyclers in sorting plastic containers. The symbol is designed to be imprinted on the bottom of the plastic containers. The numerical code appears inside a three-sided triangular arrow. A guide to what the numbers mean is listed below. The most commonly recycled plastics are polyethylene terephthalate, PET, and high-density polyethylene, HDPE. What is the NIMBY syndrome?
NIMBY is the acronym for Not In My Backyard. It refers to major community resistance. To construction of new incinerators, landfills, prisons, roads, and so forth. NIMPHY is not in my front yard. Why were such dangerous chemicals as DDT, PCBS, and CFCs released into the environment? Dichlorodiphenyl trichloroethene, DDT, polychlorinated biphenyls. PCBS, and chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, were once widely used. Although DDT was synthesized as early as 1874 by Othmar Zeidler, it was the Swiss chemist Paul Muller, 1899-1965, who recognized its insecticidal properties in 1939. He was awarded the 1948 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for his development of DDT. Unlike the arsenic-based compounds then in use, DDT was effective in killing insects and seemed not to harm plants and animals. In the following 20 years it proved to be effective in controlling disease-carrying insects. Mosquitoes that carry malaria and yellow fever. And lice that carry typhus, and in killing many plant crop destroyers. Publication of Rachel Carson's book Silent Spring in 1962 alerted scientists to the detrimental effects of DDT. Increasingly DDT-resistant insect species and the accumulative hazardous effects of DDT on plant and animal life cycles led to its disuse in many countries during the 1970s. In fact, DDT and PCBS have been added to the list of chemicals known as estrogenic compounds that is. Synthetic substances in the environment that cause the mammalian body to respond as if to estrogen. A group of chemicals with the same general chemical structure and physical properties as DDT are known as the polychlorinated biphenyls or PCBS. Because of their physical properties, non-flammability, chemical stability, high boiling point, and electrical insulating properties, PCBS can be used in a variety of applications. Formerly, many products contained these compounds. From electrical circuitry to the dyes and pigments used in paint. To carbonless copy paper, all were manufactured with PCBS. Before production was ceased in 1977, the United States produced about 1.5 billion pounds. 6.8 billion kilograms of PCBS. Chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, are commonly used as aerosol sprays. Refrigerants, solvents, and foam blowing agents. They are in and of themselves non toxic and non flammable molecules containing chlorine, fluorine, and carbon. However, they are thought to have a deleterious effect on ozone concentrations in the atmosphere. In what way can forest fires be good for the environment?
wildfires are critical to maintaining the integrity of forest and grassland ecosystems. Forest and grass fires usually started by lightning, act as an ecologically renewing force by creating necessary conditions for plant germination and continued healthy growth to occur. The primary goal of fire management is to simulate the revitalizing aspects of natural fire cycles. Fire management also attempts to prevent large catastrophic wildfires from occurring by removing accumulated debris from forests. Seen throughout the American West every summer, these extremely intense fires are caused primarily by decades of fire suppression, which has allowed heavy fuels accumulated debris to build up. Ironically, by attempting to prevent natural fires, humans have only increased their prevalence. What is El Nino? Along the west coast of South America, near the end of each calendar year. A warm current of nutrient-poor tropical water moves southward, replacing the cold, nutrient-rich surface water. Because this condition frequently occurs around Christmas, local residents call it El Nino. Spanish for child, referring to the Christ child. In most years the warming lasts for only a few weeks. However, when El Nino conditions last for many months, the economic results can be catastrophic. It is this extended episode of extremely warm water that scientists now refer to as El Nino. During a severe El Nino, large numbers of fishes and marine plants may die. Decomposition of the dead material depletes the water's oxygen supply, which leads to the bacterial production of huge amounts of smelly hydrogen sulfide. A greatly reduced fish, especially anchovy, harvest affects the world's fish meal supply, leading to higher prices for poultry and other animals that normally are fed fish meal. Anchovies and sardines are also major food sources for marine mammals such as sea lions and seals. When the food source is in short supply, these animals travel further from their homes in search of food. Not only do many sea lions and seals starve, but also a large proportion of the infant animals die. During the winter of 1997 to 1998 El Nino effects resulted in the second warmest and seventh wettest winter since 1895. Severe weather events included flooding in the U.S. Southeast, ice storms in the Northeast, flooding in California, and tornadoes in Florida. The 1997-1998 event indirectly caused 2,100 deaths and $33 billion in damage globally. What was the United States' first national park? On March 1, 1872, an act of Congress signed by Ulysses S. Grant established Yellowstone National Park as the first national park. The action inspired a worldwide national park movement. How do trees grow out of rocks?
If you didn't mow your lawn for a whole summer, eventually your lawn would become a grassy meadow. The change in community structure observed over time is known as ecological succession. When the succession begins in an area that is previously unoccupied or unchanged by other species. The process is known as primary succession. While the tree cannot actually grow out of bare rock. It can begin to grow from small amounts of soil and debris that collect in pockets of the rock. Over time the tree may grow well enough to send roots into the rock itself. Causing the rock to split and making it appear that the tree has sprung from within the rock instead of from its surface. When was the EPA created and what does it do? In 1970 President Richard M. Nixon, 1913-1994, signed an executive order that created the Environmental Protection Agency. EPA as an independent agency of the U.S. government. The creation of a federal agency. By executive order rather than by an act of the legislative branch is somewhat uncommon. The EPA was established in response to public concern about unhealthy air, polluted rivers, and groundwater. Unsafe drinking water, endangered species, and hazardous waste disposal. Responsibilities of the EPA include environmental research, monitoring, and enforcement of legislation regulating environmental activities. The EPA also manages the cleanup of toxic chemical sites as part of a program known as Superfund. How much newspaper must be recycled to save one tree? One thirty-five to forty feet, ten point six to twelve m. Tree produces a stack of newspapers four feet, one point two m thick. This much newspaper must be recycled to save a tree. What is a biogeochemical cycle? The elements that organisms need most, carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur, cycle through the physical environment, the organism, and then back to the environment. Each element has a distinctive cycle that depends on the physical and chemical properties of the element. Examples of biogeochemical cycles include the carbon and nitrogen cycles. Both of which have a prominent gaseous phase. Examples of biogeochemical cycles with a prominent geologic phase include phosphorus and sulfur where a large portion of the element may be stored in ocean sediments. Examples of cycles with a prominent atmospheric phase include carbon and nitrogen. What is the Kyoto Protocol? The Kyoto Protocol was an international summit held in Kyoto, Japan. In December 1997, its goal was for governments around the world to reach an 
Agreement regarding emissions of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases. The Kyoto Protocol called for the industrialized nations to reduce national emissions over the period 2008 to 2012 to 5 percent below the 1990 levels. The protocol covers these greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide. Other chemicals such as hydrofluorocarbons, perfluorocarbons, and sulfur hexafluoride were to be added in subsequent years. What is the Kyoto Protocol? The Kyoto Protocol was an international summit held in Kyoto, Japan. In December 1997, its goal was for governments around the world to reach an agreement regarding emissions of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases. The Kyoto Protocol called for the industrialized nations to reduce national Emissions over the period 2008 to 2012 to 5 percent below the 1990 levels. The protocol covers these greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide. Other chemicals such as hydrofluorocarbons, perfluorocarbons, and sulfur hexafluoride were to be added in subsequent years. What is bioperacy? Bioperacy refers to the development of pharmaceutical products without compensation to the native communities that protected and nurtured the organisms on which these products are based. What is bioperacy? Bioperacy refers to the development of pharmaceutical products without compensation to the native communities that protected and nurtured the organisms on which these products are based. What is a bioinvader? A bioinvader is an exotic organism usually introduced into an ecosystem accidentally. These bioinvaders are non native plants and often overwhelm the native species. Examples of bioinvaders include the kudzu vine. Kudzu was first introduced in the 1930s by the United States. Soil Conservation Service for a Good Purpose Eto Control Erosion Kudzu now grows uncontrolled in the southeastern United States, pulling down power lines and killing trees. Other bioinvader species include zebra mussels, Great Lakes, Purple Loose Strife, northern United States and Canada and the Asian long-horned beetle first reported in New York but now spreading into the Midwest what is a bioinvader A bioinvader is an exotic organism usually introduced into an ecosystem accidentally. 
these bioinvaders are non-native plants and often overwhelm the native species. Examples of bioinvaders include the kudzu vine. Kudzu was first introduced in the 1930s by the United States. Soil Conservation Service for a good purpose Ito control erosion. Kudzu now grows uncontrolled in the southeastern United States, pulling down power lines and killing trees. Other bioinvader species include zebra mussels, Great Lakes, Purple Loose Strife, Northern United States and Canada. And the Asian long-horned beetle, first reported in New York but now spreading into the Midwest. What is the scientific method? The scientific method is the basis of scientific investigation. A scientist will pose a question and formulate a hypothesis. As a potential explanation or answer to the question. The hypothesis will be tested through a series of experiments. The results of the experiments will either prove or disprove the hypothesis. Hypotheses that are consistent with available data are conditionally accepted. What is the scientific method? The scientific method is the basis of scientific investigation. A scientist will pose a question and formulate a hypothesis. As a potential explanation or answer to the question. The hypothesis will be tested through a series of experiments. The results of the experiments will either prove or disprove the hypothesis. Hypotheses that are consistent with available data are conditionally accepted.